insert on the wild side. Roll the tape. A rainy morning on the Saunders family farm at Neutgedacht, Michalisburg, venue for the release of six vultures and two secretary birds, birds that have recuperated after being poisoned, injured or dehydrated. Dr. Gerard Verdoen, head of the Sassel Vulture Monitoring Project, tells us more. In terms of the broad picture of vulture conservation, that to release six birds back in the world, it doesn't really contribute that much to the population. But we do this as a PR exercise for the vultures because, you know, people, even nowadays, after all the awareness and stuff, people still perceive these birds to be stinking, filthy, ugly, awful creatures and so on. And today, again, I just watch people, people subtly, you know, the change in the facial features and the moods when they see this bird close by and realize, hey, this is a wonderful thing. So the main aim is to, to bring people close to a bird, to see what impact we as people have on the birds by having power lines to kill them, poisoning, shooting, trapping, dehydration, not enough food, and then create empathy for the birds. Yeah, let's open the wings. Okay, these, these spots you see over here, these underwing coverts or the stitching marks, that we use to tell you exactly how old the bird is. And I hope that most of these birds today, which are youngsters, will actually fly to other regions. We've had some of them flying out to Khababas in Namibia. We've had them arriving in the Eastern Cape, in the Free State of Zastron. They've arrived up in the Kalahari. So the idea has always been that the Mahalis bird is a very important area because the progeny from these colonies will actually resettle other parts of the country where the griffins were wiped out many years ago at the point. You also see on the griffins, if you look at this one, they've got these naked spots there. Those are the blushing spots. And if they're red, like in this case, the bird is highly annoyed. It's advisable then to keep your fingers away from it. <laughs> okay, if they're relaxed, it's a nice bluish color, like you'd see around the eye. And in this case, if you look at the head of this bird, it'll be a male bird. It's a broad and flat head, triangular towards the back. If it was a female, the egg would, or the heck would be egg-shaped and long and narrow. It was also an opportunity to reward people for their conservation efforts. The Saunders family, John and Alta Saunders, and their son Cliff, um, as far as I'm concerned, some of the most wonderful people in the world, simply because they took the plight of these birds to heart. And um, many years ago, in 1989, they decided they want the griffins back on the farm because they disappeared here in 1967 because of construction and disturbance and so on. And they started a vulture feeding program right on top of the plateau of the Mahalisberg. They spent thousands of rands out of their pocket. All that time, I think they drove two buckies to extinction with fetching all the food from all over this, this area. And in that way, they attracted birds from other parts of the Mahalisberg back onto the farm. Now, that feeding has also helped the other two colonies to stabilize and to avoid getting into poisoned areas or areas with unsafe power lines. So it's a broad context that they took under their wings and they changed the whole scene for vultures very positively. Another thing which is good about what they did is they attracted the attention of people from their own area, from Southern Africa and from worldwide because it's the first time in history where people took these birds to their heart and they managed to re-establish in a natural way, not by breeding or by supplementing with released birds, by simply supporting the birds with food. And this is now being used, or envied, let me say that, as a model for vulture conservation by many other people all over the world. And for this family, I think it was very special, but there are many other people in the country that are really worthy of an award like this. And once a year, we will select the best candidate and give them the award. But apart from that, you know, I think we should also thanks South Africans in general, but primarily the farmers and our supporters like the Cecil and the Master Wildlife Fund and other people that supported us because it's supposed to be a team effort. It's supposed to be all people that have an interest that pool their resources and do something for the birds. Excellent. Nice hat, Gerard.